in the old days, when Tara Tom was a young, young man, Tara Data used to do a random AMP sample if statistics had not been collected. I'll give you an example here. Let's take a look at this query. Select everything from the sales table where the product ID is equal to 1,000. The parsing engine would say, did we collect statistics on the sales table? If the answer was yes, it would just trust those statistics to the end. Sometimes that was a problem. So here's the other scenario. They would say, did they collect statistics on the sales table? And they go, statistics were not collected. They would say, do a random AMP sample. Go out and pick an AMP, ask it how many rows it has on the sales table. Then we should just multiply that by all the other AMPs in the system. We should get a good estimate here. That was the random AMP sample. Now, today, Teradata always does a random AMP sample so it can compare if statistics were collected so it can see if the statistics were stale. Sometimes it'll use the random. Now here's the way it works. We say collect statistics and we do the sales table. Statistics were collected. So now when they run the query, select everything from sales table where product ID is equal to 1,000, Teradata will even say they collect statistics. Oh, they did. We know it's there. I want you to do a random AMP sample anyway. How do they pick which AMP? Well, they say, let's take the table name, sales table, hash it, get a row hash, go to the map. Oh, which AMPs the bucket say it's in? It's on AMP 2. AMP 2, you're responsible for the random AMP sample of sales table every time goes out and says, here's how many I have. It only does indexed columns and a table row count. And then the parsing engine can multiply that by the number of amps and say, I think this is the statistics that I can go with. It will often compare that to the real statistics. And now Teradata is really up their game. They're going to make sure that the parsing engine doesn't make any mistakes when it's coming up with that plan. Let's review. When you create a table on Teradata, as soon as you execute that create statement, a table header is created on every single AMP. Boom, 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 boom. So all AMPs have the exact same tables, same number of tables. It's like looking in a mirror. They just have different rows when the data is loaded. Now, whenever you query a table, the parsing engine might say, we're going to do a full table scan. Bring your table header amps into FSG cache. Now, bring those data blocks in, and they can process this. So, where are random amp samples kept? In the table header. A couple things could happen here. We're going to query a particular table. The parsing engine will say, were statistics collected? If the answer is yes, they will bring those statistics in and they'll put it into FSG cache. They will also then say, let's do a random AMP sample and put that in the table header and move that up in there. So it can compare the sample to the real statistics to see if those real statistics are stale. Now, if we're in a scenario where they say, hey, did they collect statistics on the table? They did not. Well, then they'll do the random AMP sample, put that in the table header, and then they'll use the random AMP sample. You see, most of the time, a popular table will have that table header still in memory, so they don't have to keep going back and doing that random AMP sample. The only time they have to do that random AMP sample again is any time they're bringing that header into memory the first time. That's when they're going to have to do it. As long as it's still in memory, they just use the sample that was collected a little while ago. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. The next is Query Chameleon, a query tool looking to help your data adapt to any surroundings.